G'day folks. Well, today we're going to test some 24 volt equipment for a friend of mine. Um, this is a guy I got a lot of the uh, lap IBM laptops and other stuff off these Lenovo computers. Um, he's our work IT professional and uh, he wants to build a little, little electric cart for his kiddies to ride around in. And he wants something, say, running pace, if mo a little bit more. Um, I'm going to give him this as a Christmas present and I think he's going to get me a uh, 120 gig SATA laptop hard drive in exchange for it. So, a bit of an equipment trade. This is a 600 watt DC motor that I've fully refurbished. Gearbox didn't really need refurbishing, it was just a uh, flood damage write off. Uh, cleaned it up, re oiled it, or replaced the oil, checked all the seals and things, and they're all good. New main seal in it. Uh, new bearings in the motor and everything, which is one of the ones I repaired a while ago. I think I did a video on this one. There's a couple more down there which have oil or flood damage. Uh, same with gearboxes, they usually end up leaking and shredding themselves, so I think these ones are both screwed. They've run out of, run out of oil and damaged themselves, but i just got to get around to testing and confirming if that's the case. Um, this is what's going to be driving it. Curtis DC controller for an electric scooter. This one was replaced because it wasn't working properly and it's a 70 amp model. We don't use the 70 amps anymore, they're just not strong enough. Uh, we've gone up to I think 120 or 140 amps. Uh, it's model 1228 2420. Um, copyright or patent 1999. Um, yeah. I'm going to try and dig out some bits of old loom and stuff I've got and see if I can power it up. If it does absolutely nothing then I've got to try and repair it which is actually quite difficult with these. But for starters I'll check with the check the loom. I can't remember what was wrong with this. My supervisor did the repair on the machine, not me. So I don't know exactly what this was doing. I know the motor that it was driving was not starting in certain positions or it just wouldn't work. So. Yeah, I think there was a short in the motor, and it may have fried this, which is quite unfortunate because these are quite expensive. But either way, we'll have a look at it. The, the unit needed two new batteries shortly after it, so maybe it was just a battery problem. The motor and gearbox out of it's been sitting outside in the weather for a while now, so it's a bit past it. I'll probably end up throwing that in the steel bin. Um, yeah, the gearbox was also squealing and howling pretty bad when the motor did run, so. The gearbox would definitely be shredded, but the uh, motor itself, well, I've got plenty of them. Not too fast, it can go and work scrap bin. There's like all the pull pumps and things. I don't bother collecting electric motors anymore, they're just not worth it. I've got enough DC motors for my projects, and pull pumps and things like that just aren't worth it, so they all go in the rubbish bin. But controllers and things like this that installers and repairers throw out, well, if it's a 110 volt model, we generally send them off for repair unless they've been for a swim in the pool like the water, the equipment's become fully immersed in pool water uh, I've been able to fix one of them after I went for a swim, the relay was the only problem, it got rusted shut and that's inside my custom speed controller there but again it's not 100% happy, it doesn't always like running so yeah it's a bit hit and miss with water damaged equipment but eh, it's worth a try, especially for a $400 device so let's crack this thing open and have a bit of a look. Well actually I won't open it up, I'll just power up and see what happens. I'm not going to go too, get too carried away, although I think these tags, the B plus and B minus, are dry jointed. They just don't look very good. It's definitely been over amping. The back plastic case almost falls off. Well it does fall off because it's gotten so hot. It's all shriveled up. So. Yeah, it's definitely got very hot, but whether or not it's still alright, I don't know. Yeah, and that's what's inside my current speed controller. I just had a look at the bits of loom and things that I have floating around, and it's all past repair, really. Not reliable enough to do a test, so I'm going to disconnect this controller and just stick this one in place of it. Just have to separate that. Yeah, it's easy enough. I made it fairly indestructible, but... I can still unplug this Curtis controller and reuse the box. And this is just for running any 24 volt DC motor. It's got a terminal block on it and you just wire it up accordingly. I can wire this one straight in there and it'll run. 
Yeah, just to demonstrate using the old controller. That's the uh, with the main power connected to the batteries. Bring it forward on. That's low speed. See, it's a bit too slow for direct axle drive on a small vehicle. It either have to be large pulley down to small pulley, or chain in other words, or replace or take this off and flange mount it to a steel plate with just a pulley coming straight off the motor. So the motor does 2,000 RPM. Amp meter works too. But of course with no load it's not going to read very much. The breaker in this is 40 amps so if it goes much above that we're really pushing it even though we run a 110 volt 110 amp controller on the uh, machines at work it's all fairly overrated for what it is and with overrating comes reliability I'm pretty sure these are pulse, pulse width modulation controllers, PWM. I'm not 100% sure though, but it sounds like PWM, judging by the sound from the motor. Okay, battery's on. Main brake is currently off. On minimum. This is with the replacement controller, of course. So, brake is on. Let's go forwards. Yeah, it's working. It's about half throttle. The speed variance is different to the other one, but probably because of the amperage rating. Just jumping a bit then. Reverse. Hmm, that's odd. And that said this one was blown up. I wonder if it's a bit temperamental under load though. That's the thing, you don't know if these triacs are breaking down. Because these have six triacs in them. You don't know if these triacs are breaking down until you get them under a lot of load. I've got a feeling they were load testing it when it played up. I'll have to build a uh, test bench for these. We've got a battery tester at work which is just a DC motor and a, a brake caliper and rotor. And all you do is you just uh, start the motor up and then just start applying the brakes. And just see how many amps the, the uh, meter pulls and how low the battery voltage gets. But I guess I won't have to pull this to bits. There are a couple of sus solder joints on the B plus and B minus input, so I might just quickly touch them up. They won't be helping. Uh, same with the main relay and everything like that. I'll just give it a quick re-solder. And we'll check the capacitors at the same time, because there's a bunch of big DC caps in there which can play up from time to time, or they break away from the main board from vibration. Uh, the, one of the ones I fixed at work had the caps floating around inside it because they'd all broken off. Well, I think three of them had broken off and the fourth one couldn't handle the load without its partners there and just blew its top and died. But I just fitted new caps to it and it was good as new. Hmm. I think I've got another swimmer in the cupboard here somewhere, which is, uh, I think it's either on or off. It doesn't let me vary the speed control with the potentiometer, it just runs flat out or not at all. So, there's something horribly wrong with it. But all the board was oxidised and nasty, I ended up doing a bit of rebuild work on it and that was the best I got, was virtually no speed control. It'd start moving about there, and by the time you got up to there it was going flat chat. So, it's a bit of a mess.
Hmm, it's not complaining. Okay, that one can go in the uh, okay pile. I'm not going to throw it in the bin. I'm just working through this area here, working out what I can keep and what I can throw out. And yeah, that's definitely a keeper, along with the motor. I'll probably try and re rebuild another one or two motors soon because I'm going to need a replacement for this. The uh, original idea was to use this to polish, to spin the rotor on the DC generator so I can polish it on its test stand, but I just haven't had time for that. Well, I want to get some more insulation material and other crap and get the brush assembly back together. Um, that reminds me, I should get my mate to uh, send me some of that. I keep forgetting about that. But either way, that's enough for this afternoon, I think. Oh, I'll do a little bit more, but... Still a bit tired from the whole Christmas thing. You know how it is. Thanks for watching. Oh yeah, that's the main board, in case you're wondering what it looks like. I can't really lift those up to tell you what type of triac they are, but there are... Uh, there's actually eight of them. I thought there were six. But, yeah. Be careful not to break that, because I think the uh, backing plate of these triacs is actually positive, and the casing's negative. <laughs> I've seen a couple of these where they burn through and just fried. Literally the whole thing just starts burning up. It stinks. But yeah, the caps are all glued together, so that's good. It's one of the standard procedures for installing, is to actually open them up and put silicon between all the caps so they don't vibrate around and fall off. Um, yeah. The circuitry itself looks different to the newer ones, the 110 amp or whatever they are. These old, these old school ones are, uh, if not, maybe a little bit chunkier. But the 110 amp model is, seems to be much more reliable with the motor of this size. I can imagine these motors pulling quite a few amps. And even just recently we've upgraded from a 40 amp circuit breaker to a 63. Simply because 40 amps is underrated and it's tripping early. But yeah, not too bad. Made in China, of course, but Curtis Instruments make a good speed controller. Well, uh, yeah. That was the problem with the flood damaged one. The relay was uh, sticking or just rusted shut. Made in Indonesia.